It's come to my attention that a lot of students are working on Macs these days, which means you don't necessarily have Excel to work through your data. So I thought I'd just go through a data set here on Microsoft, not Microsoft, on Apple's version of uh, Excel, which is called Numbers. Now, I know that a lot of you prefer to work on Google Sheets, but you cannot do the error bars and the maximum minimum lines of best fit on Google Sheets. So you have to do this on Numbers. So if you're working on a Mac, can you download Numbers? It's free, you can get it from the App Store, and that's where you can do your data instead of on Excel. So I have a, a small data set here. Uh, the, the, the question is, how does the temperature of a magnet affect the mass iron, mass of iron filings the magnet can attract? So we've got temperature here, which is the independent variable. That's what we're going to change. We've measured how at each temperature how much mass of iron filings it can attract. And we've done that three times. So we want to find the average mass. So we write equals average, open brackets, and drag along those three values, close brackets, and return. Then we pull it down, and that gives us a value for each of those at different temperatures. If you wanted to change the number of decimals, you can do that with this button here on the right. The uncertainty in mass is also, you can also use a formula to do that. So equals, we want to take the maximum number out of these three values. And then we want to subtract the minimum number of these three values. Oh, we might have to write that in, give me a sec. So let's write C3 double dot E3. Okay, what does that give us? That's maximum minus minimum. Not finished yet, because we have to divide that by two. So divide, let's put brackets around everything. And divide by two. And again, pull that down. So we have the independent variable temperature. And for temperature, we have a constant error or uncertainty, that's 0.1. And then we have three different values of mass, that's a dependent variable. We've worked out the average of that value, and we have a different uncertainty for each value of mass. So let's start to plot this graph. So we'll, we'll highlight this column of the independent values of temperature. Then we'll press Control or Command, sorry, we'll press Command and highlight that. Then we'll go up to Chart, click Scatter Plot. Ugh, what a disgusting looking scatter plot. <laughs> it's horrible. So let's make that nicer. First of all, the chart. Let's just have a background. Let's make it white. Okay, uh, white. So that means we can bring it up here a bit and see it better with all the data. We'll make it bigger. Right, I think you'll agree that these dots look horrible, don't they? So we'll double click on the dots, go over to Style, and let's put a little cross like that. In fact, let's put a little cross like that and make it very small. Okay, so they are very small. What's going on there? There, I'll do. So we've got these little values here. Next thing we want to do is we want to add error bars. So double click on these little values and you'll see the series tab at the top right has all the data here and you can put a trend line. Yeah, well, let's put the trend line in, show the equation. Oh, the trend line looks absolutely horrible. Let's just go to the style of the trend line. Double click on the trend line, go to the style. Let's take away the shadow, make it thinner. There, that's better. Right, so click back on the data, and we want to add some error bars. Now the X error bars is the independent variable, and that's temperature. So we want to give positive and negative, and we want a fixed value for that of 0 0.1. So our X error bars are done, and they're so small you can't even see them. So we'll click back on the series again. This time we want the Y error bars, again, positive and negative. This time we want to use custom values, so values that we determine. And we go to positive, get rid of that 10, and we'll highlight 
that column there. And what that will do is it will associate a positive uncertainty with each value of average mass. Oops, I didn't click OK there. So back, return, OK. And then we'll do the same on the negative. We'll highlight that thing, press return, and you can see that our error bars have have arrived. Okay. Now, I think we need to add the maximum and minimum lines. So let's go edit data references. And we are going to, oh, no, don't do that yet. Let's add another column on here too. So to add a maximum and minimum line, we basically want to, oops, we basically want to set up a whole new data set. So let's call this the maximum line. So for a maximum line, it'll be the steepest gradient. That means we're looking from going to here all the way down to the bottomest, bottomest, the lowest point there. So we'll go to the data point minus 20 for temperature. That's this point here, and we want it to be higher. So we'll go to the average mass is 45.3, whoops, and it can go as high as one above that. So our maximum line here is going to be 46.3. And similarly, down here, we want it to be the lowest. So 27.3 minus 2 is 25.3. So there's a new data set. So we click on here, edit data references, and add this. And you can see now that we have two new data points here. Again, they look horrible. So let's just click done, click on this data set. Let's make them smaller. So we'll go back to there, make them that smaller smaller and we will add on the series we'll add a trend line linear show equation that line looks awful again so let's double click on it get rid of the shadow and make it smaller so now you can see we have a, a maximum line of <laughs> i'm just trying to move this equation here how do we do that Well, that's the maximum line there. Uh, I can't seem to move the equation, but that's fine. And then what we want to do is add a minimum line of best fit. So for a minimum line of best fit, we'd like it to be as shallow as possible, which means we're going to go from the bottom end of here to the top end of there. This generally works. Uh, we'll talk about it if it doesn't work afterwards. Add column afterwards. Let's write minimum line in here. Um, so that's going to be 45.3 minus... 1, so it's going to be 44.3, and here it's going to be 27.3 plus, so 29.3. Click on here again, edit data references, and add in another data reference. So see, we've got two more points here. Click on these data points, let's make them smaller. Um, and I don't want that colour, I want them red. Okay, and red. Connection lines. So let's now go to those that series, add a trend line, linear, add the equation, and we have our line of best fit. Again, it's not a very nice line, so double click on that line. Let's make it red like the others. Let's make it a bit smaller and take away that shadow. So we have three lines of best fit. The blue one is the, the, the main line of best fit. The green one is the maximum line of best fit. And the red one is the minimum line of best fit. So, do they work? Well, they only work if each line goes through the, the box that surrounds this point that's made up by the error bars. So you can, rather than imagining them to be positive and minus error bars on both sides, you imagine a, a box being created by these, an area of a box being created by these error bars. And ideally what we'd like to do is say that all of these maximum lines of best fit go through these boxes, okay? That's not the case here, which means our results are not very um, precise or reliable. But actually, what I think we can do is we can say that this value here, this one here, is an anomaly. So that's where the temperature is at 55. Let's just take that out and see what happens. That doesn't work, okay. Oh, I don't think I did that correctly, sorry. Oh, well, yeah, that's a bit better. In fact, we seem to have that line of best fit just goes through there. 
the maximum line of best fit nearly goes through every value, but do you know what I think we should do? I think we should bring it up a little bit because it's not quite going through that point there. So we wanted to go to the green maximum line of best fit and the bottom one we want to increase in its size. So let's make that 26.3. And that goes through, but actually it goes through by too much. Let's go 26. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we're going to manipulate that number until we see the maximum line of best fit going through all the error bars. Now, the minimum line of best fit, we're going to want to manipulate because it's going nowhere near that error bar. So we want to take the top end of the minimum line of best fit down by a bit. So let's make that down to, say, 43.3. Did that work? Oh, no, I've done the wrong one there. 3.3, let's go down a bit. So 28.3. I think we need to go a bit more actually. Too much, so let's go uh, 20, 28. Yeah, I think that could work. Okay, so we've just manipulated these num these four numbers here to try and get maximum minimum lines that go through all the error bars, and we've eliminated our anomaly. And you can see that the three equations here all relate to the error, the lines that we've written. So that's our main line of best fit, that's our maximum line of best fit, and that's our minimum line of best fit. There's still stuff we can do to make this graph look nicer. Um, I don't like the axes, so let's go to the axes and let's add more steps. Whoops. Oh, that's in the, right, so we'll go on the x value first. Just keep adding steps until you get a nice uh, um, interval between the, the error on the numbers. So you can see on the bottom here, that's now quite nice. In fact, we could go further and have it in tens, couldn't we? There we are. That looks nice. And let's add some major grid, grid lines. So do that. Oh, it's a bit heavy. So let's make it thinner. That's nice. Okay, let's add some minimum or major, <laughs> minor grid lines. That's what they're called. Nice thin ones. Okay, so then we go to the y-axis, and again, well, let's just change this number of steps, major steps, until we get something that looks better. What was that? Nope, keep going. There we are, that goes up in fives, quite like that. Um, the major line looks fine. Let's show some mi minor lines. They're going to have to be thinner. Um, I like that. I think that looks good. And of course, what you'll then do is put your titles on the axes, but you're good to go from that. Now, I hope you found that useful in terms of building out the graph on numbers for a Mac. Again, let me reiterate, uh, you cannot do this level of graph on Google Sheets. So you will need to um, download numbers for Mac or find access to Excel. Okay, hope this helps.